which is what everyone should be doing when it comes to investing. What's going on YouTube? Taylor Prentice, I'm here with my boy Andrew again, and today we're gonna to be talking about how you can invest your first $500 and what you need to know going into it. So let's just go ahead and get right on into it. $500, uh, some people might not think it's very much to get started with, and some people might think it's too much to get started with, but it's actually a good amount. If you're a beginner investor, you should know if all you have is $500, maybe you shouldn't invest all of it because you shouldn't invest more than you can lose. Or like if you have to pay rent, you don't want to tie up all your money into stocks. You know, you want some of it to be more liquid or in cash so you can pay what you need to pay because you want to be able to invest and hold it if it goes down. You don't want to have to sell out and lose money and then not be able to pay your rent anyway. Yeah, this is something I preach all the time on this channel is you never want to be forced to sell out of your positions when you're down or in the short, short term because you never want to see like something just shoot up right after you sold out because you needed that money. So yeah, that's just a position you never want to be in is investing money that you need to have to spend. And a lot of people will look at the gains in the short term, but what we want to show you is what that $500 can do in the long term even if you don't touch it, if you just let it sit. To show that, we're gonna use a compound interest calculator, which you can find on the internet by Googling it. What Andrew was saying is you take $500, you invest it, uh, you wait 50 years, which obviously seems like a long time, but granted we all live 50 years longer. Uh, at the 10% interest rate, that would grow to $58,695.43. So not bad for a return on $500. Although obviously it takes a little long, but just crazy to think that $500 can turn into that much money over time without you really having to do much. Obviously 10% is a little bit higher than your average return on like an S&P, but it's still somewhat reasonable. So that's why we went with it and just to make the numbers a little bit easier since 10% is a little easier to deal with than eight. But and it's probably less than the recent years too. Like the, yeah. the recent bull market's been more than that. Been killing it, yeah. And uh, as long as you don't have to touch it, you know, this could be a good chunk to save for your kids or for like a late retirement. And you got to think about like, if you weren't spending that 500, you were just saving it. You got to think about over 50 years, how much in or how much uh, inflation would eat away at that $500 principal. So starting with 500 and ending up with 58,000 is enough for you. What you could do is invest consistently, which is what everyone should be doing when it comes to investing. Investing isn't like a one-time lump sum investment and then all of a sudden you make all this money. Really, it's something that you should be doing consistently to grow your wealth and just have more funds available and get that compound interest in action. And to show you guys that, if you were to just add $100 each month on top of your $500 principal investment, you would end up with $1,595,054.68. And that's based on the same numbers of 50 years and a 10% interest rate. So yeah, that just shows you the importance of investing consistently and how much, like $100 a month may seem like a lot to some people. And obviously it's a lot easier for some people to be able to invest that than others. Some people's uh, budgets are a little tighter than others, but just, if you can invest any consistent amount and try to grow that over time, once you start like buckling down and investing 20 bucks or 25 bucks, you'll figure out ways that you can kind of cut down on your spending or just ways to make other money. Once you start seeing those numbers go up, it gets kind of addicting. Yeah, you'll just go down the rabbit hole of different ways to cut your expenses, build your income, and then just build your investments too. It's all about long term because if you think about what most people spend their money on a month. You're spending $100 on something that's short term, whether that's like junk food or like, or like <laughs> a, a phone bill, drinks at the bar, or it, it really anything. Most people could budget that out. And when you think of it in the long term, then you could end up with a million and a half that you never else would have had. And to just show you like the importance of investing long term. So like I said earlier, if you were to invest 500 uh, in the beginning and invest $100 each month for 50 years, you'd get the roughly one and a half million. 
But if you were to only do it for 25 years, you would only have $135,000, which obviously is still a ton of money off of your principal, your initial investment, but uh, definitely not anywhere near a million and a half dollars. So. so let's just show too, if you wanted to take it up a step, and budget a hundred dollars a week what would that change it to and that's the beauty of these compound interest calculators is that you can play around with it and really try to measure and see how you want to do things for the future you know if you do want to go after that 10 million dollar return you know i mean by contributing and by having a large principal you know it, it helps you really see that and visualize it 52 weeks of the year, so if you're putting in $100 every year, or 5200 throughout the year, that would give you $6.7 million. So, yeah, just a crazy number. And, like, right now, I try to invest, like, 1000 every month, and, like, the compound growth does not feel like it's go like, has any motion, but that's because I'm, like, in the beginning of my investment journey, and I know a lot of that compound interest doesn't come in until later. Like, if you look at Warren Buffett's growth, or, like, his wealth over time, you'll see, like, the end is just rapid growth, and because, and that's because of compound interest, and that's really been why he's done so well. And that was exemplified where, in 25 years, you're making way less than half of what you were making 50 years. In 50 years, you're making like 10 times what you would have made in 25 years because of that power that every time the money gets bigger, it's compounding to get even bigger, it's snowballing that. So yeah, we base the calculation on a 10% interest return, and that is basically the average of what the indexes have done in the past. But to his point, if the market's going down, he's not gonna see that 10% gain each year. You know, it's on average. So if it goes down this year, he's hoping that over time, he's gonna get more gains to where it all equals out. But you might not see it in the short term or even in the first, I mean, 10 years, you know what I mean? You might not see a huge gain, but once you really let it snowball, that's that's where the Warren Buffett money comes in. So you might be asking us, if you wanna invest $500, what are you gonna invest in? Where are you gonna put your money? And that's a really personal question. So for me, it was stocks. Uh, it just made the most sense because you don't need like a ton of capital to get started. And they're pretty easily accessible now with places like Robinhood and Webull. You can do no commissions trading. And a little plug for us, if you guys need a Robinhood or a Webull account, you can sign up down below and get some free stocks. The Robinhood is my link and the Webull is Andrew's account. So pick whoever you like more or just whatever app you want to use. Webull is the better app. <laughs> Robinhood's a little easier to use, but I do think Webull offers a little more in-depth analysis and just better stuff to look at for more advanced users. But yeah, like I said, uh, for me and him, it seems like stocks were just like kind of the go-to. But for some people, you could even like start a business with $500. Obviously, it's a little hard to start a business with $500. But like we were saying here, if you're able to add your monthly income, like $100 to that business, maybe over time you can get it to where you want it to be. And uh, there are just some other ways, like crypto is obviously a pretty lucrative way to invest right now. What's a good way, you think? I mean, there are all kinds of things you, you could invest in, like from real estate, you know, to flipping cars or any any type of small business you know where you could buy something low and sell it high so yeah you want to know what you're investing into for sure whether it's stocks or anything you want to understand it before you just throw your money in and the average re return we're talking can come just from letting your money sit in an index fund where you're not even picking individual stocks you're just writing the whole NASDAQ or the whole Dow, that's based on the average. So if you were stock picking and going after like stocks you thought were on sale or had the potential to be a 10 bagger or something, then you could be looking at way crazier numbers. Like this is just the numbers that everybody should be getting because this is what the market is going at. So if you're, if you're well diversified, you should end up with this. Or if you just put all your money into an index fund, you should about end up with this. Yeah, like, so think about all the numbers we showed. Imagine if you were getting, like, 30%, like Peter Lynch was, with the Magellan Fund. Like, it would be astronomical numbers. On let's, let's try that. So let's put 30% into the $500. 
and this is without contributing anything. Yeah, so your initial $500 investment, no monthly additions, 50 years to grow, at 30% interest would be 200, roughly $250,000, which is pretty good. And yeah, you gotta think Peter Lynch, like that's like what he did. Like a lot of us have like normal jobs and normal life, like somewhat normal lives. So yeah, getting 30% is not really realistic, but coming up with a way to add $100 to your account is realistic for most people, so. And you don't, like we said, you don't even have to pick specific stocks. You can throw it in an ETF or an index fund and have hundreds of stocks that are added in there. And yeah, you can get some diversification without having to keep track of a million different companies. Exactly. Yeah, so if you guys want to take the first step in investing your $500, you should definitely click that Robinhood or Webull link down below and get started there. Free stocks are the best kinds of stocks, even if they aren't always winners. I've gotten Zynga like a million times, but I look, he should have held it and went up. But anyways, you can get a $3,200 stock. Yeah. I think that's the max on the Webull on the one. I'm not sure what it is on Robinhood. I feel like they change it every month, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, anyways, getting a free stock is always something that we want to do, so hopefully you guys do too. But thank you guys so much for watching if you made it to this point. We really appreciate it, and we will see you next time. Have a good one. Peace.